the will and the do to stand in his presence. So I want us now to focus on him and him alone. I want us to focus on the one who can change the course of our lives. But before that, allow me to read one thing. In the book of Psalm number 50, verse number 14, Psalm 50, verse number 14, and verse number 15. The Bible says, Offer to God thanksgiving, and pray your vows, and pay your vows to the Most High.
Almighty One is on your side. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. While you are still standing, let us welcome the person God has designed to share the word of God with us. this day, for this time, and for this hour. An hour that you have set aside for us, Lord, to be fed with the knowledge of your word. Lord, we surrender to the guidance and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And we want you to speak to us, and we want you to reveal to us the perfect will of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we silence any other spirit, Lord, right now. And we accept to hear the voice of the living God. It is written, my sheep hear my voice, and they will follow me. Let it be so for my brother, for my sister, to hear your voice, so that together we may follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, beloved. We may be seated. Thank you to Almighty God. Thank you also to the choir for a wonderful time of praise and worship is spending in God's presence. Amen. I would love to take this opportunity to say also thank you to Pastor Manzambi for asking me to bring today the Word of God. And without any further delay, beloved, I'm going to request us to open up the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 7. And we shall read from verse number 3 to 8. This is the message which we started last time. And we are going to continue today. The Bible says, Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? This question, beloved, is very crucial. Because we actually painted the picture of the reality in which these four leprous men found themselves. Number one, the entire country was facing a challenge because there was a famine in the country. And number two, the country was under the dominion of the enemy, the Syrians. And number three, these four men were sick. Therefore, they were excluded from the community. It's just like what is happening currently. Anyone who's affected with uh, coronavirus, you will be requested to, to be in quarantine or in isolation. And thank God they can request you to be in isolation. But back of the time, they will place you in isolation. It means you don't have a choice. And then we said it is important for us to do something in order to see a given change in our lives. Why? Because critical conditions, tough situations, and even certain needs that we have will never just disappear without us taking certain appropriate actions. Things do not just disappear because you wish them to disappear. But the things or situations or realities are expecting you to do something in order for them to be solved or resolved. This is a bitter pill to swallow. Do you know that? It's because you do have the ability it's because you've got, I can say, in you God has placed and God has hidden certain abilities. That's the reason why you've got certain problems. In another way, problems and realities are so clever. They do not go to people who cannot solve them. If you've got a problem, it's because God judges you able to solve it. 
But most of the time, we like to ask the question, how can God allow such a thing to happen to me? As if it is a wrong thing God is doing. But you are forgetting that in you, God has placed the ability for you, beloved, to solve those issues. So if we want our conditions improved, if we want our realities changing, we must be prepared to take a risk with God. Many of us, beloved, are afraid of taking risks with God. I like the song we sang. I think it will be a motivation for us. If you know that Jehovah is by your side, if you know that God is on your side, beloved, many will be the risks that you will take because you know how capable God is. And one good news this morning that I want to share with you, beloved, whenever you choose to take a risk with God, you are qualifying yourself to experience a miracle. So taking a risk with God is qualifying yourself for a miracle. Because miracles do not happen when all the conditions are perfect. Whenever the conditions are unpleasant, whenever the conditions are very bad, whenever there is a crisis, it is a fatal ground for a miracle to happen. And if you choose to take a risk with God, you are choosing to experience a miracle. You are qualifying yourself for a miracle if you choose to take a risk with God. Let me give us practical examples. Beloved, the young man David, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, we know the story very well. From verse 45, even 46, you will see if you read the entire chapter, you will see that the young man David will take a risk with God. He never took a risk on his own. Why? Because the Bible says, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. So if David is using the name of the Lord of, or the name of the Lord, it means David is taking a risk with the Lord. David accepted to take a risk with the Lord. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. The next verse. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. In another way, I'm not going to be the one who's going to fight you. But I know the one who's in me is greater than you. He will deal with you and he will grant me victory. This is what I'm saying. If you need to see a change in a given domain of your life, you will need to take a risk with God. Beloved, let us think about our father of faith, Abraham. These are practical examples of people in the Bible. We know the stories. Abraham took a risk with God to accept to leave his father's house, to accept to leave behind his family, to accept to leave behind his country. The place he knew, the people he knew, he left them behind. And even shocking, the Bible says he was going to a place which he never knew. He was on the way as a mad person. But this was a risk he took with God. Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 4. I love verse number 4. Can we, can we read verse number 4? The Bible says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And the Lord went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Aram. 
He was going. Why? Because he heard the voice of God. He accepted to take a risk with God. And we know that miracles will accompany him. Another example, beloved. Let us go to the book of Matthew. If we go to the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse number 22 to 33. This is the story of Peter. Beloved, Peter accepted to take a risk by the time the Lord Jesus Christ told them that it was him walking on water. Peter was not alone in the boat. Other disciples were also in the boat. But only Peter accepted to take a risk with the Lord and he is the only apostle who managed to do what the Lord Jesus Christ did. A miracle took place. Why? Because Peter accepted to take a risk with the Lord Jesus. He left the comfort zone. Beloved, I have come to tell you one of the things you need to do in order for your condition to change it is to leave the comfort zone. If you are comfortable in your comfort zone, you will never experience a miracle. It's only when you accept to leave the boat. It's only when you accept to leave behind a bad friendship. It is only when you accept to leave behind a certain practice and you choose to do as the word of God says, then you will experience a miracle. When you accept to do what the Lord says, you will qualify yourself to benefit a miracle. Therefore, beloved, do something. Never will you experience a miracle while sitting in the comfort zone. Never. Sitting and doing nothing is disqualifying yourself from experiencing a miracle. If we go back to the book of 2 Kings, the story of our four lepers, the Bible says, by the time they decided now to go to the camp of the Syrian, that is when now the Lord God will perform a miracle on their behalf. It was not by the time they were sitting, but it was by the time they chose to go. They took a risk to go and a miracle will accompany them. The Bible says, behold the signs, the miracles which will accompany those who will believe. If you believe, your belief will only be valid by the time you choose to practice or to do something. And then, if you do something, God will honor your act of faith by giving you a miracle. If you choose, if you choose, beloved, to do something, then you can expect a miracle to follow you. So sitting and doing nothing, beloved, it is a way that we should all avoid. Because it will never take us nowhere. In fact, if you think that I'm not afraid, Jehovah is by my side. Let me remember, I mean remind you, that Jehovah, yes, he is on your side, but he lives in you. <laughs> he is in you. And the Bible says, greater is the one who is in you than he who is in the world. And when you look at the one who is in you, God from the very beginning, he is a waking God. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And what was the condition of the earth? I'm in the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. If you read, the Bible says, the earth was void and also shapeless. This is an image of a chaos. But God chose to do something with the power of his word. And God says, let they be light. That was just the beginning of the transformation or the beginning of miracles. So if your God is the one who does something in 
order to change conditions. How much more you as the son of living God? Why are you sitting in the condition in which you are until you die? Time has come. If you need to speak, speak solution. If you need to do something, do it for the glory of the name of Jesus. Beloved, things which we dislike and pleasant conditions or bad realities will never change, will never be flushed out by sitting and doing nothing, but by doing something with the help of the Holy Spirit. Actions need to be taken, no matter what. Do something and you will witness your condition changing. Beloved, if we talk about David, many of us we think, yes, David, you know, decided to go and fight against the giant. But do you know that it's because of David's conditions? David's conditions were propellers, or David's conditions were the reasons why David would take a risk with God to go and fight the giant of life. The Bible says, the king decided and said, anyone who's going to kill the giant, look at the benefit. I can, I can, I can, I can put them in two groups. Financial benefit, and the status benefit. It means uh, your financial, your social conditions will improve. You will become the king's son in law. Not only that, uh, you, you, you will be exempted to pay taxes. Beloved, it means you know that David was a shepherd. He was not working for a company and expecting a salary at the end of the month. David was a shepherd for his father's business. There is no mention of a salary. So David saw an opportunity to change his social conditions. David saw an opportunity to change his financial conditions. And he decided to take a risk with God. At the end of the day, David will become the son-in-law of the king. And his financial conditions were also improved. That's why I'm asking you the question, why are you sitting until you die in poverty? Why are you sitting until you die? While you know how even to do hey? While you've got a certain skill? While you've got a certain knowledge? Use your knowledge with the help of the Holy Spirit and a miracle will accompany you and your condition will never remain the same. Therefore, do something. Do something, my brother, my sister. If you want your condition to improve, if you want your reality, even what I love, David did not just look at himself, but the promise of the king was including his family as well. If your family is in a very critical condition, you can be the David of your family. If you can choose today to take the rightful decision with the help of God, through you, your family can be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, such shall be your case. Amen. Do something. Not long ago, beloved, we meditated in the book of Esther. And we know the story of Esther. Yes, she became the queen by the favor or by the grace of God. But beloved, a position as a queen was not a comfort zone in which Esther could just sit when there was a problem for a people. Esther needed to do something in order not only to save her own life, but she needed to do something to save the lives of a people. Esther, because she chose to do something, she has become now a source of blessing.
missing to other people. She took a risk. Beloved, number one, let us learn a few points of the story of Esther. In Esther chapter 4, we already meditated the whole chapter. So it's very easy for me just to mention some point that we can find there. Queen Esther prayed and fasted. And Queen Esther also asked for prayer and fasting from other people. This is the spiritual side of a thing. Beloved, some of our conditions are not normal. They are spiritual. And we need to fight in the realms of the spirit. You and me, to see or to witness some of our conditions changing completely, we need to pray and adding on that, fasting. So prayer and fasting are activities to have if we want to witness miracles, signs and wonders in our lives which will change the conditions of our lives. When last did you pray? I can see why the microphone is going off and on. It's because what I'm saying concerns you. And the devil is very unhappy with me. But unfortunately, he's not going to get to me. Beloved, prayer and fasting. When last did you pray for your conditions? On your own? without the church organizing a prayer and fasting program. And you are expecting a sign and a miracle from where? When last did you go on your knees for the condition of your family? Yes, you may have, you know, naughty children, but don't forget that you are their parent. You do have a responsibility. When last did you fast for your child? When last did you pray for your daughter? And the same applies with you. You've got a parent. When last did you pray and fast for your parent? When last did you present the conditions of your family to God in prayer and fasting? Beloved, there is a certain spiritual level that God is awaiting us to reach for us also to benefit from him. Queen Esther asked for support in prayer from other people. There are people with big issues, big, I, I, I don't know how to put it, but they, they are trying to deal with those issues on their own. Thank God if you are, a, 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 how do you call it, Rambo. You know, when you watch those action movies. One man can kill an entire country. <laughs> if you've got that ability, let me tell you, spiritually speaking, there is no rumble. Amen. You need the support of other people as well in prayer. Because there are certain things that you are, because you are a human being. You are limited. You need the support of other people in prayer as well. That's what Esther did. Not only that, Esther decided now to take a risk with God. After winning the battle in the spiritual realms, Esther now will have to go in the physical, do something, going in the presence of the king without any permission. And it was only by the time she stood in the presence of the king, without being called. That way, the favor of God now will play its role. Beloved, you are limiting the favor of God because you are too scared. You are too mathematical. You are thinking too much about the consequence. What if it doesn't work? But this morning, I want you to think, what if it works? This is the way we need to think in order for us to be encouraged to do something. Why do you only look at the negative side? What about the positive side of your action? What if it doesn't work? But this morning, what if it works? This is what David says. If I go, I know it is in the name of the Lord. You come against me with a spear, with a 
javelin with a sword. But as for me, I come against you in the name of the Lord. I come against you in the name of the Lord. And I know the name of the Lord is the name that is above all other names. Every knee shall bow down. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the King. This morning, I want you to do something in the name of the Lord. The story of Esther, you will understand that it took courage and determination for Esther to go before the king. I was listening, a friend of mine sent me a very short video of one of, uh, one of the pastors in the DRC. And this pastor, he really made me laugh. He was having people, I think they went to the mountain to pray. And uh, he was telling his congregate that there are certain things that you don't need to pray for. You just need to do them. And one of the things that you should not pray for, it is courage. You can pray, you can fast for courage. It will only happen when you choose to act. So courage is something that whether you pray for it or not, you've got it already. All what it takes, it is you to practice it. And many of us, we are busy praying for courage. But while all what it takes, it's just for you to go out. So please don't pray for courage today. Just do it. And he gave a funny example. He says, you know, you are in love with a sister. Why are you praying for courage to talk to her? Just go, one, two, three. I love you. And then if she says what? I wanna marry you. At least the message has been sent. But if you busy praying for God to convince her so that she will understand that you are the man. You will pray for 10 years, you will pray for 20 years. It will never happen until such a time you will decide to go and open up your mouth and say, you know my sister, sometimes we say things not because we are lying, but because we want to win the case. You know if I don't see you, I don't sleep, you are lying. Oh no, I mean I'm just joking. Oh, may, may God forgive me. All what I want to say, do something. If you need to say something, say it. What if it works? Instead of you keeping it and dying in yourself, but release it and let the nature take care of the whole matter. Beloved, this is how a sign, a miracle can happen to you. What do you think? Do you think, how did we get married? I don't want to ask our fathers who are present. I'm talking about myself. How did I get married? Do you think I was busy praying? No, there are things that I did. By the way, okay, I, I can see I've got a lot of my sisters and my brothers here. So, uh, I'm your elder brother. I've been married for over than 13 years. So, I'm qualified to give you an advice. <laughs> Beloved, in terms of relationship, you must be honest toward one another. If you are not ready, you know it that you are not ready. Why will you start a relationship? You know, in French, we call it long metrage. Okay, I will try, I will try to change it, uh, to, in, uh, to translate it in English. You know, why will you have a long-term relationship? When you know clearly that you are not ready. By the way, if you are waiting for all the uh, elements to be together, if you are waiting for, you, because now, nowadays, you know, this generation, they've got a list of expectations. Okay. So if you've got that list, I'm telling you, you're going to wait for long. You will never meet someone who's going to fulfill or to teach all, all what you've got on the list. Getting married is a risk that you should take. And you should take it with God. You will never know that it will work until you are in. The problem with you, you are trying to taste it and that getting married is 
is not like you are cooking that you can taste whether there is salt or there is no enough of spices. No. Getting married, you need to be fully in it. Whether there is no salt, you are already in it and you put salt while you are inside. If there is too much salt, you are going to deal with too much salt while you are inside. Sorry, how did I reach there? Can I close up that bracket? I'm sorry. <laughs> Beloved, do something if you want your condition to change. That's the bottom line. Don't sit until you die. You know, there are situations in which we find ourselves. It's because of us. Think about the prodigal son. The prodigal son found himself in the book of Luke, chapter, I love the story of the prodigal son too much, chapter 15. Everything was fine until when this guy decided to do something. So the story of the prodigal son is a two-edged sword. I like it. Why? Because if you choose to do something which is against the will of God, there is a consequence. That's why I'm saying, do something with the help of the Holy Spirit. Meaning, God will guide you. God will show you exactly, not even if it is not exactly, but God, if he knows what you are doing, you are doing it for his glory. He will direct your path. So that even when there is a problem, he will intervene. He decided to ask for his inheritance before the father died. Wrong decision. And every wrong decision is accompanied by consequences. He lost everything. The Bible says he was in a condition where he wanted to eat the meal that the pigs were eating. This is how low he found himself. He got a job, but one thing he forgot, he forgot is this. When you get a job, you need to wait for a certain uh, period of time before you get a salary. And for you to go to work, you don't say, pay me first so that I can have money to pay for transport. No, you've got a job, you have to find a way of paying your transport to go to work until end of the month, then you will get paid. So this boy was struggling even to feed himself because he chose to do something wrong. But glory be to the Lord. The Bible says, better the hand than at the beginning. This young man decided that, no, I have done something wrong. How many of my father's hired servants, they've got food enough to eat and to spare, but I'm dying here with anger. I know what I will do. I will go back to my father and I will tell him, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired servants. He decided to go back home. Beloved, he took the rightful decision. And the things that he lost, he found them back. There are certain things. You can lose them today because of a bad choice. But if you choose to do things according to the word of God, God will bring them back to you. Think about, you know, this prodigal son. Yes, he left his father. But by the time he came back, his father will give him more love again. His father will give him sandals that he lost. His father will give him a ring which he lost. This is what I'm saying. If you choose to do something for the glory of the name of God, God will bless you. Your condition will never remain the same. Even if you have made a wrong choice, even if the current condition in which you are, it's because of you. Still, you can do something to change it. All what it takes, it is the willingness. Don't think this way. What will my father say? What if my father reject me? This young man never thought that way. But he said, I will go back and I will tell him that I was wrong. 
do something. Let me give us one last example that we can pray, beloved. This one I want us to read it. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 1 to 7. This is the story of a woman. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door and behind you, and you sh your sons then pour it into all of those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons leave on the rest. If we stop the beloved. This is a very powerful story. The condition of this woman was very critical. The husband was normal. And the husband left the debt. And the two sons were supposed to be taken as slaves in order to pay them for the credit that the husband left. But this woman could not accept to witness a son's being slaves. She went to the man of God. But I'm shocked, beloved. The man of God literally did not assist her. He didn't help her as she was expecting. What the man of God has done is to encourage this woman to identify things that she had and what she could do herself in order to solve a solution. Beloved, I mean a problem. Beloved, sometimes we expect other people to come and give us a handout. We are expecting money. We are expecting, I don't know what, material things. Yes, you can get them. But the best way is for me to help you to discover your hidden abilities, the resources that you've got, and apply your faith over your resources and your abilities, and a miracle will follow you. This is exactly what happened with this woman. The man of God told her, use your own abilities and provide for your own needs. I have come to tell you, no matter the problem you've got, if you can look clearly or carefully, you will discover one thing you've got which can be a source of blessing to you and to the rest of your family, uh, family members. All what you need it is to do something with the help of God or with the help of the Word of God. Beloved, there are certain principles in life already established by God. It's only when we obey to those principles, then a miracle will also follow us. And one of those principles is waking or waking. Waking is a divine principle. And it doesn't matter whether you know God or not. If you wake, you will get a positive result. But you, you will get even a better result. Why? Because the favor of God will accompany you. Think about the young man, Joseph. The Bible says, yes, he was a slave. He was a worker in someone's house, but he was successful to a point where his master decided to give to him all the responsibilities. Why? Because he accepted a divine principle. So I'm not expecting you to sit there until you die. But I'm expecting
continue to do something with the help of God. May God bless you.